Anthony Lionheart Smith may just be the most delusional UFC fighter of all time. Smith has even gone on record to say that John Jones, the consensus greatest MMA fighter to ever do it, was not that good. He's not that good. Okay. He's pretty fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> and that if you took all of Jones's individual skills, like his kicks, elbows, wrestling, knees, that he wouldn't be problematic. That he's only good when he mixes them together. Well, Anthony Smith, that's what mixed martial arts is for, you big dummy. Smith is also famous for having an Excel spreadsheet full of excuses for every single fight that he loses, lying about his opponents being disrespectful to him in the buildup of their fights, despite his opponents having nothing but good things to say about him, and talking himself up like he's the boogeyman of his division, despite the fact that every time he stepped up to fight the upper echelon of the UFC light heavyweights, he's got cut through like butter. Now, every sport has their delusional athletes. We've certainly seen it in the UFC. Former UFC fighter Kevin Lee once said that Conor McGregor wanted to be him and even copied his style. Man, fuck Conor. I ain't trying to be like none of that. You think he's trying to be like me? We've also seen MMA fighters in denial after losses. A most recent example being Patty Pimblett after his controversial robbery win over journeyman Jared Gordon. What was most delusional about Pimblett wasn't only the fact that he thought that he actually won his fight, but the fact that he called for his performance to be awarded fight of the night despite it being the most boring fight on the entire card. Just make people fight to the night or what? Hey! So let's get back to Anthony Smith. And at first glance, although he's a well-spoken gentleman, a sharp-looking, clean-cut UFC analyst. The guy needs a reality check because he has some of the most delusional and painfully cringy takes that I've ever seen. Now, Anthony Smith's first moment in any kind of spotlight was in December of 2018. John Jones had just beat Alexander Gustafsson in their highly anticipated rematch after being absent from the sport for over a year. The UFC, eager to set Jones up with his next contender, invited Anthony Smith to be an analyst on their post-fight show. Anthony was coming off of a three-fight win streak over Volkan Ozdemir and two UFC watched-up legends, Shogun and Rashad Evans. It was clear that the UFC was trying to make up for all the lost time Jones had out of the cage because throwing Anthony Smith into a title fight after only three wins in the light heavyweight division just seemed to be a little bit premature. And so both of these men had a little bit of a back and forth, which ultimately led to the UFC booking their fight for UFC 235. John, what do you have planned in July? Bro, don't, don't use a Fox platform to try to talk your way into a fight. Show me an impressive fight. Me? <laughs> Are you talking to me? Bro, now you don't know who I'm talking to. Now you don't know who I'm talking to. Using a now, no one expected Anthony Smith to have any shot at defeating the undefeated John Jones. I mean, this was a guy that was fighting at strip clubs in cornfields in Nebraska a few years prior. He was also known for being tough as nails, often taking a beating in the beginning of his bouts just to come back and finish his opponents in emphatic fashion, which is what gave him his nickname, Lionheart. And before the fight even started, John Jones was in Anthony Smith's cozy head rent-free. Fight week was John Jones week. He's the main character, and his opponents are simply pawns in his unprecedented, violent 10-year reign over the UFC light heavyweight division. At press conferences, every question directed at John Jones. The media asking Jones what's next after demolishing Anthony Smith. Will you go to heavyweight? Hey, John, how is it possible that you stay motivated to train for the 10th toughest guy in your local Nebraskan strip club? Hey, John, we know you could probably beat Anthony Smith with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back, but how do you want to make a statement by submission or TKO? And the questions Anthony Smith gets asked, what makes you so different from all the other victims? This could definitely shake someone's confidence. Now, Anthony Smith had all of the copy paste lines that other opponents would use on Jones. He's just a man. If I strip away the name, the titles, the fucking physical attributes, it's just another fight. John Jones said it best. Anthony Smith didn't truly believe the things that he was saying. He was just spouting what his coaches would tell him to think. Jones, on the other hand, was cool as fucking ice. Not a care in the world. He carried himself that week like he was celebrating already. Constant smiling, joking around with the fans, basking in his glory, and the meat riding from all the media. Thank you. Hey. 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 The only time John Jones broke out of his nonchalant celebratory mood before the fight 
was when he was asked to rate Anthony Smith as a contender at their press conference. And this is where things took a bit of a dark turn. With a serious intonation, he said, he'll, he'll get my undivided full attention. There was just something eerie about the way John Jones mentioned taking Anthony Smith seriously. The bona fide villain of the UFC, known for being a psycho in and out of the cage, telling Anthony, the Nebraskan 10th toughest guy at your local strip club, that despite everyone thinking I could beat your ass with my hands tied behind my back, I'll have you on my mind 24-7. The fight played out no differently. By the last two rounds, Anthony Smith had resorted to a fetal position, just waiting for the fucking fight to be over. It even looked like John Jones chose not to finish him so that he could bully Anthony Smith for the full 25 minutes. And although people never really bring this up as being one of Jones' best performances, it's certainly one of his meanest. Anthony Smith's performance was so god awful that his next fight with Alexander Gustafson was promoted entirely around the fact that he did so poorly that this time he'd actually fight and not get folded into a pretzel. And this guy has the nerve to say that John Jones isn't all that. I don't, I don't have the feeling that's a guy that I can't beat. You know, it wasn't like he ran right over me and you know, I, I don't feel like I got embarrassed. Well, if he's not that good, what does that make you? To me, that's the definition of coping. He can't stand that out of all the modern day light heavyweights, his performance against Jones was the worst. Tiago Santos stole rounds from Jones. Dominic Reyes basically beat him according to most MMA fans. So every time Anthony Smith gets asked to speak about John Jones, he refuses to give credit and says that the only reason he lost is because I just didn't show up and John Jones is, is beatable. Mike, I just, I just didn't show up. I mean, on paper, I beat John Jones. He's not that good. It's, that's an interesting quote. Yeah, that's, that's he's, crazy. He's pretty fucking good. <laughs> not he might be the not individually. Guy. Like if you take his individual skill sets and you take them away, each one of those things are not a problem. And when Anthony Smith has been pressed to address his comments on John Jones, he's chalked up Jones' skill to him just being coachable. And when John Jones is not being coached, he just goes back to holding pattern, whatever the fuck that means. Winkle John, when I fought him, if Winkle John wasn't saying anything, John goes into a holding pattern. Did your coaches just come up with that term when you were training for John Jones to make you feel better? Anyway, another one of Anthony Smith's most delusional takes is that Magomed Ankalaev isn't good. Now, anyone that watches the sport of MMA and has two fucking eyes can admit the surging Russian contender Magomed Ankalaev is as well-rounded as it gets. He has phenomenal wrestling, sambo, good fight IQ, power, and really slick striking. Magomed going into his fight with Anthony Smith was looking unbeatable, and lots of people were saying that it was just a matter of time before he was a champion. They're talking about him like he's the second coming of Jesus. But when the odds reflected this, Anthony Smith being a plus 350 underdog, which wasn't even that crazy, said that he shouldn't even be this much of an underdog, even if he was fighting John Jones and Francis Ngannou at the same time. Plus 350? Yeah. Go get your money. That's criminal. Yeah. God damn. If I was fighting goddamn John Jones and Francis and gone at the same time, I shouldn't be a fucking plus 350. That's crazy. Delusion at its finest. In the build up to this fight, Anthony Smith went on to give his usual Magomed, if you took his individual skill sets away, wouldn't be that good, yada, yada, yada. He ended up getting his fucking ass whooped, convincingly losing the first round and getting TKO'd on the ground in the second. He followed this loss up by saying that Magomed wasn't as good as he expected him to be. I expected, I think I expected him to be better. I didn't do one thing wrong. You look like, good. I, 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 I won the I, best I, performances I, I, of my life in the first round and I was like- I mean, this is crazy. How good did you expect Magomed to be? Finished you in the second round and clearly won the first. Did you expect to get knocked out in the first five seconds? He then went on to say that he was doing perfectly fine and the only reason he lost was because he injured his leg, which was obviously caused by Magomed Ankalaev, kicking him and checking his kicks and tearing him to shreds. But of course, he couldn't possibly have just said that he got it bested, and it had to be the leg injury. It just couldn't have been that Magomed Ankalaev was good. And yo, what is up with this guy always saying he's gonna go out there and make these fights chaos? Talking about dragging John Jones into an all-out war and 
I'm not giving into this fucking guy. I'm not giving him an inch. Same thing he said to Magomed and Goliath. He said that this was going to be utter chaos. He was going to light the octagon on fire. I am going to set that fucking octagon on fire. And I'm not going to be the first one to step out of it. So Anthony Smith talks like he fights like Yuri Prohaska. He really thinks that he's like the Yuri in the division that could just go in there and just bulldoze any of these top five guys. But we've never seen it. And sure, Anthony Smith has had some dog fights back in the day. But whenever he's fighting anyone that's very good, he looks as reserved and as measured in his approach as can be. He was saying that not even King Kong could beat him in a three rounder. And in a three rounder, he's the light heavyweight champion. Bullshit. Because when this guy fought Magomed and Goliath, he was getting pieced up and pushed back the entire time. It wouldn't have been something I'd bring up if Anthony Smith weren't constantly telling us that he's going to light the octagon on fire. So on paper, Anthony Smith is the champion of the world and of every combat sport too, given that he's the all-knowing master of individual skill sets, according to him. And I honestly think that I can explain it because Anthony Smith sees himself as one of the boys. He's been surrounded by other UFC champs for a while now on the analyst desk for post fight shows, podcasts with Michael Bisbing, and even in the training room with like Jamal Hill, who he just helped to fight Glover, who just captured the light heavyweight belt. And if you're looking at the light heavyweight division these days, a third of the ranked guys have been UFC champs by now. He feels like it's just a matter of time and that on paper, he's capable of beating everyone. Eventually, he'll be champ, but the time is ticking and he's never got past the upper echelon of the light heavyweight division. Every time he steps up in the rankings, he gets demolished. He can beat guys like Ryan Spann and Devin Clark and a young Jimmy Crute. And I will say, however, that he does actually have some really good skills. He seems to be improving. He has really slick and underrated striking, but his ground game is incredibly overrated. I mean, this guy's always talking about how dope he is on the ground being a BJJ black belt and all that, but he's been getting fucked up on the ground by everybody recently. Magomed steamrolled him on the ground. Glover beat him so badly his teeth were falling out, and Alexander Rakic looked like Habib on top of him. Anthony's also lied about Ryan Spann, trash-talking him in a lead-up to one of their fights. Anthony Smith was coming into the Ryan Spann fight after getting two good wins in a row when he accused Spann of disrespecting him and looking past him. He also said that Spann was trying to punk him. Now this picked up a lot of attention because after the fight in which Anthony Smith got the win, he threw a tantrum in the octagon, having to be pulled away from Ryan Spann. Now if you didn't see any of the interviews or media that Ryan Spann did leading up to this fight, you probably could have taken Anthony Smith at his word. I mean, damn. Span must have said some wild shit to get the level-headed Anthony Smith this heated. Wrong. The weirdest thing about this whole debacle was the fact that Ryan Span never once mentioned anything remotely negative about Anthony Smith, at least publicly. Anthony was making up lies to get hyped up for the fight, which was just a bit strange if you ask me. He also went on the Michael Bisbing podcast the following week and said that Ryan Span was his bitch for life. But I think he's just coping with the fact that he's Jones's, Magomed's, Glover's, and Rakic's, and Tiago Santos's bitch for life too. I just think he could use a serving of humble pie every once in a while because his ego is so out of control. Is this guy fucking nuts saying that John Jones isn't so good? I am actually losing my composure, man. This is hilarious. If he doesn't own up to his losses, he'll never truly learn from them. So I hope that one day he can get a bit more real with himself. Oh, bro. It wouldn't kill you to show your opponent some respect after the fight and just admit that they bested you, man. You don't always have to make excuses up. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Until next time.